Hello and welcome to Mike's Garage. Um, if you're enjoying our videos, by all means, please subscribe. And when you do, please click on the little um, the bell, the notification bell. If you click on the notification bell, you'll be notified every time a new video comes out. One of ours, that is. Anyway, in our last video, we built this wheel. And I'm real excited. This is going to go on the front of the project bike. It's a 19-inch brawny rim with a brand new chrome um, star hub. And I can't quit turning it. I'm sorry. But it's just one of those things. And the spokes are polished stainless steel spokes and nipples. And so we put it all together. And I put it on the truing stand. And everything is fine, except I'm not done yet. And believe me, after taking such a long time to do that last video, I'm not going to hold this one that long. This one, we're just going to show how to true the wheel. Now, if you follow the instructions in the book, they're always good. Um, basically, what they tell you is keep going round and round and increasing the spokes until they get even and fairly tight. Like go around and around, they'll say, uh, uh, first get the nipple to cover the threads. So you do that on all 40 spokes. Then you go around and you start tightening each nipple two full turns. Well, okay, so we do that. And then we get down to the point where, okay, it's time to true it. Um, truing it gets a little bit involved, and, and I'm going to try to, to simplify that a bit. It took me a long time to simplify it for myself, so hopefully I can word it in a manner that will help you. You see, we want to true it side to side, and we want to true, true it radially, up and down. So let's just hang with that for a minute. The next thing to remember, and the way I always look at this, if you go back to our last video, we installed the spokes 10 and then 10 and then 10 four times. So we did the first set of spokes going in one direction, the next set of spokes, set of 10 going in the next direction, and then the third and fourth set on the other side. And we got them in the right direction according to the book. And according to the pattern, which is crossing over four spokes. Again, here's, here's an outer spoke, and it crosses over this inner one. It goes over, th over four of them. That's the typical Harley pattern, is crossing over four. And it, besides being incredibly strong, I think it's really attractive. I think Harley really has always done a nice job on their wheels. We, of course, want to use a little bit different components, which means that when I do go set up the wheel for the final truing and, and the whole works, is that this is a 19-inch rim. It's narrower than the stock 16. We can't use our dimensions out of the book because they're not going to work. This is a custom wheel. Here is a straight edge. And I want this wheel to be centered on its hub. So if I go against this edge right here on the outside of the hub, and I get this vernier caliper, and I can go just like that. And that tells me my measurement there. Since I want it centered, I want the same thing on the other side. Now we're just doing a rough quickie here. And I might add, we're almost, we're real close. The rim still needs to come a little bit this way. Now normally when, when truing a rim, it's best to true it up and down first. Now remember, we have four sets of 10. Not only do we have four sets of 10, we have 10 sets of four. 
Now, please think about that for a minute because it's real easy to get confused. But if you look at your wheel, there's four spokes there. Four, eight, 16, 20. I will go around there and pretty soon I'll have 40 of them counted all up. But what we have is 10 sets of four. See how these each cross each other and they're on opposite sides of the rim. Now I'm going to speak a little slower and I don't mean to be rude by doing that, but I, it, it took me a while to get to, to really grasp this idea. Okay, so now I have this arm here. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it has a pointer and I'm pointing it against the rim. Now I could use a dial indicator, but you wouldn't be able to see it as well. I think if Mike's showing that well, and I'm sure he is, you can actually see the end, the, the, the gap in here. I think I'm trying to point at it. And you can see as the gap gets larger and smaller. So we need to center this wheel up and down properly. Now here's where it gets scary. It's not scary, it's just, it's almost backwards. But you find the closest spot. Okay, there's a close spot right there. Which means the rim is lower right here than I would like it to be. So what I want to do is raise it. I don't want to pull it to either side. I want to pull it up. So to pull it up, I'm going to tighten these four because they're right there where that pointer is. There is one, two, three, four. I didn't animal it. <laughs> I just tightened them a little. Oh, that did pull it up a little bit because that was a low spot. And it did pull it up. So now I'm going to get to the closest spot I can and I'm going to raise my pointer a little bit because I'm coming into, coming into really close here now. So if you can see that, you can see that that gap is not as large as it was. Or I guess we could say the rim was not as close as it was. As right now, the rim is right up almost to that pointer. And so here's four spokes again. And we're going to lift it up a little bit. One, two, three, four. This is the kind of work that makes you get calm. Oh, we're getting close now. There it is. It's just a little bit close right there. And so here I have four that are real close to that pointer. So I'll put my hand on all four of them and I'll take this wrench and I'll go one, two, three, four. And we're even closer. Okay, I can keep at that for a while. And as far as I'm concerned, if I spend 20 minutes doing it, or I spend three days, I don't care. This is my wheel, and I'm going to go real fast on it, and I'm going to have a real good time. It's that critical. Now, Harley calls out 30 thousandths of run out. Well, 30 thousandths is fine. That's within spec for Harley. Myself, if I'm going to sit here and do this wheel, I want to get it as true as I can. I'll take it down to ten thousandths or less. I used to do years ago, I did, I did uh, wheels for my buddy Knucklehead Jr. He was just a kid and I knew he was going to be going real, real fast. And so I insisted on doing his wheels for him. And I taught him how, and he's, he's a lot faster than me.
Anyway, at building wheels he is. Anyway, so what we've got is we've, we're, we've, we're, we've closed in on the up and down movement of the rim. When we, when we tighten the spokes, it pulls the rim toward the spoke. Okay, now we're going to change our thinking all together to get this thing on side to side. So let's see if I have an Allen wrench here, which I do. I'm going to turn this thing a little bit. Let's see what I can do. Let's see. I should have set that up a little better, I think. Um, side to side, you know. I think we'll just do this. Again, I usually do this with a uh, with a dial indicator, but it makes it too hard to see the whole operation if I do that. Okay. You have to be careful you don't scratch the rim, especially an alloy rim like this one. Okay. You can do this visually and then sneak in close on it. Again, use a dial indicator if you like. Use a, feel a feeler gauge if you like. That was a little too close, folks. Let's see what we got now. That's pretty good. Okay, now, if we get it to a real close spot on this pointer, right here, what we want to do is we want to pull the rim over. So we're only going to use the spokes on this side. Now, I may do like four of them, like one, two, Three, four. And look at that, it doesn't touch anymore. And pardon me for saying so, but there it is. So if I want to pull it in that direction, I can tighten them on this side. If I want to pull them in this direction, I can tighten them on this side. But what you want to do is find the closest spot and then tighten the spokes on either side of that, that, that point. So we'll do four of them over here. And then we'll go around and do it again until we get it really, really true. Then what we'll do is we'll measure it again. See that both sides match. If they don't match and the wheel is perfectly true, I can move one flat on each spoke. We'll say I wanted to move it that way. I could loosen one flat on each spoke and then tighten one flat on each spoke and move it right over. That's really all there is to it. When you get all done, what you want to do is torque it. In the old days, people did it strictly by feel. Today we have more money, I guess, than people had back then. I have my inch-pound torque wrench. Recommendations on this particular setup are 80 inch-pounds. And one of the guys taught me years ago, it was actually a gentleman at Buchanan Wheel, Buchanan Spoken Wheel. That was Kevin. And Kevin taught me to make this tool. That's my own spoke wrench. And what it is, is it's a, um, I've shown these tools before in, in our videos. The little dog bone that I use for tightening head bolts. 
This was a smaller one. This was a nine C. Oh, that, that is the same size as for doing head bolts. I must have destroyed it at one point. So that's what I did. I cut that notch to fit these spoke nipples. Now they do actually make torque wrenches specifically for this purpose, but this is what I've been using for years. I turn the tool at right angles to the head of the torque wrench. At that point, you're not changing your torque reading. This thing is set at 80 inch pounds, and I will go all the way around and do every one of those spokes at 80 inch pounds. This is after it's true and the spokes are fairly tight. Once it's true, then you can go all the way around it with your torque wrench and then check it again to see if it's true. Another thing I like to do is when I work at them and finally get them right, sometimes I'll let them sit overnight to just normalize themselves and then check it again the next day. Anyway, I think wheels are that critical. I think that's all I have to say on it. I think that pretty much does it. Uh, like I said, I didn't, I didn't want everyone to actually sit here and watch me uh, true this thing for a while because that's what I'm going to do when we're done with this video. So thanks for stopping by and uh, see you out on the road.